Welcome to the dark forest. Jackie and her pals will never bore us. Shameless confessions about our obsession will make us laugh and smile. So let's explore the dark forest and dark down for a while. Hi, this is Jackie Cash, and welcome to the dark forest. You have chosen wisely. You may have found it on iTunes or dorkforest.com or thedorkforest.com if you enjoy a determiner or jackiecation.com where everything leads uh, out like the hub. You might have found me through allthingscomedy.com, which is the podcast network that I'm part of, Al Madrigal and Bill Burr's podcast network, which has a lot of great shows on it. Go to All Things Comedy and look at it. My hour-long special which, by the way, top 10 from the Washington Post comedy specials of the year last year, 2014. This will make an excellent horcrux. I was number four. Very exciting. Anyway, $5 download off of allthingsrecords.com slash Jackie Cation. All lowercase for some reason. Anyway, or you can get a hard copy at JackieCation.com of the CD or the DVD. Two different shows. You could just buy the DVD and rip the audio. But I really liked uh, the show where I did the CD. So there you go. You can get combos. You can get T-shirts. You can get a hooded sweatshirt, zip hoodie. You can, um, yeah, there's merch is what I'm saying at JackieCation.com. And also there's a portal to Amazon. So when you order from Amazon, if you go through JackieCation.com, I get a kickback. It's a way to support the show um, if you don't want to donate or buy stuff, if you can't. And uh, that's no problem. You can just talk it up, too. If you want to donate, you can donate 100 bucks a year by sending me $10 a month. Yes. I haven't made it easy, so there's a donation button on dorkforest.com and on jackiecation.com. So feel free to do that if you like the show and you have 10 bucks a month or 100 bucks a year, and I'll send you a trinket. That'll be fun. The credits, let's do them. Late. Uh, Mike Rickberg composed and sang with his girlfriend, Sarah Cohen, the, Me- uh, the Dork Forest theme song, and he will sing the Mexican hat dance at the end of the show. In addition... Uh, Patrick Brady going to fix this audio. It's going to be great. And Bill Mosh does my website design uh, for JackieCation.com. I do stand-up comedy, you guys. My schedule, full schedule, is at JackieCation.com. It's February 17th, 2015, so I'm in Los Angeles. And then I'm in Vancouver with Maria, and then in Nashville uh, with Maria, and then all over the Southwest with Brian Regan. So I'm opening up for fancy people who are also, by the way, very nice people, which is what I, uh, one of my criterium. Anyway, the first week of March, I'm in uh, Austin, Texas, Cap City. By the way, this month, this week, I'm going to be on Conan, unless they change it between the 17th and the 19th. I'm going to be doing the Conan O'Brien show, uh, stand-up comedy on February 19th. Very exciting. Anyway, thanks a lot for listening. Let's get into it. At RBC Wealth Management... Social responsibility starts at the top. As a part of the Royal Bank of Canada, RBC has been recognized among the world's financial, social, and environmental corporate leaders. Our sense of responsibility extends to our reputation for putting clients' interests first. My personal commitment is to help you achieve your financial goals by also considering sustainable and responsible investing strategies. To learn more, visit www.darlacashian.com. RBC Wealth Management, a division of RBC Capital Markets, LLC. Member NYSE, FINRA, SIPC. Hey, it's Jackie Cation. I'm still in New York City, even though I'm not in New York City, because now it's not the time when this will be airing. But uh, I am uh, sitting here with Paige Branson. Welcome to the Dork Forest. Hello. Thanks for having me. All right. I have been on your podcast, yes. Level 7 Access. Yes, a couple times now. A couple times now. And with Andy Ashcraft yes. discussing Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and all things Marvel. Yes. And um, And you... I'm in New York, and you're like, no, I will take a bus down from Baltimore Gladly. to be on the Dork Forest. That is possibly the dorkiest <laughs> thing ever. It's awesome. It's not that hard for me to do. It's just going from Baltimore to New York. It's just Greyhound bus, $20. It was like, oh, okay, so I can spend $20. Is that and- round trip? Yeah, round trip. Holy hell. Yeah, so super easy. That is super easy. So I was like, okay, $20, and I get to go up to New York for the day and be on the Dork Forest. Um, yeah, okay, I'll do that. I'll Free do that. T-shirt. Exactly. Oh, live yeah, it, I can't pass that up. up. <laughs> okay. And, and you did the amazing fan art that I'm using, by the way, as my cover of everything. It's, awesome. Uh, it's very Yay. fun. It's been, there's been some really cool fan art from Dork Forest lately. I got a couple yeah. of awesome 
uh, Magic the Gathering cards from this guy and his and his wife. And uh, really, Jackie, not going to say their names? Nope, nope, not going to know them. <laughs> nope, Off gone, hand. gone to Still the ether. Still fighting a cold. And uh, my apologies. I love them with the power of the sun, <laughs> as do I love me and Groot and baby Groot. Uh, awesome. Uh, so great, Paige Branson. And so at Paige underscore Branson, B-R-A-N-S-O-N. Mm-hmm. Um, and make it Twitter, easy. Is yeah. your Twitter feed. And then it's just Paige Branson, no underscore dot Tumblr for mm-hmm. your, more of your art. Right, because that wasn't taken. Exactly. And which is weird that that's not taken. That person who was on Twitter... Yeah, just want a Tumblr. Feed. Yeah, just didn't make the jump. You know, didn't yeah. like cat pictures. How about Instagram? No, I'm not on, I'm not on, Instagram. Not on Instagram. No, like right. I'm still avoiding it. I don't and, know. And if anyone's on LinkedIn, I don't want to be. Linked oh no, to you. not me. No, I can't do it. Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm linked to everything else, and so you've done vital work. Yeah. So, and then Level Seven Podcast that's on iTunes and yes, and, iTunes, and Lipson, Stitcher, wherever. I don't wherever think you we've... find your fine podcast exactly. And mm-hmm. at Level Seven Pod Access Pod at Level Seven Access Pod there on Twitter. Yes, on, mm-hmm. for Twitter for the podcast tweet mm-hmm. and super fun. And now we are going to talk about we could talk about Marvel. And we will. At maybe. great length. Uh, right. But let let us figure out if we're really going to, what we're going to do here. Um, Sailor Moon. Yes. That's what jumped out at me because I don't know anything about it. Awesome. Yeah. That was like one of the first uh, like cartoons and like animations that I really, really, really fell in love with. Right. Like right when I was, I was like little, it was, it was one of the first things like on TV that like really, really jumped out at me and I grabbed you. Yeah. Because like I could tell like the animation is suddenly much better than everything else that I see on TV right now. Okay. Why is this? And it was kind of around the time when like you're just starting to have home computers and internet in your house. Okay. So I was like, all right, maybe this magical box upstairs can tell me some more information about this and then i started to learn like oh japanese animation there are different kinds of animation maybe i'll go down this rabbit hole right right (laughs) that is a huge artistic rabbit hole yeah it it, did it sort of inspire you to I mean, because you were probably drawing anyway as a little kid yeah exactly because everyone was yeah but like people who become artists it's a different thing Mm -hmm. you know like what they discover and whatever so sailor moon uh I get it mixed up, I'm afraid, uh, with Powerpuff Girls. And That's Holly understandable, Kitty. yeah. Uh, so, uh, what? <laughs> it is not Powerpuff Girls, and it is not Hello Kitty. It spawned Powerpuff Girls, kind of, oh, the whole, it? like, magical oh, girl sense. genre, basically. It's okay. kind of, like, there were a couple others before that, but it's the one that really took off when it comes to, like, any magical girl anime kind of, kind of style. Okay. Um, yeah, like, early 90s that's when like the manga came out um and it was like it was definitely like a big thing for like it, so the it, it, manga ca- it. it came out in book form in manga yes and then they made it into a and that was in the early 90s yes and then they made it into a tv show almost that- at the same time okay so the manga was still being written at the same time that the show was on so basically each season uh, would go with like a certain arc of the manga and would run kind of concurrently and then go into crazy pants sometimes in the anime because okay. they, they, they kind of They're caught faster. up. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. they were just like, well, we have our own ideas for certain things. And then they just kind of deviate like every single season almost. Right. And it is huge. The fandom for Sailor Moon. Yeah. It really has survived. <laughs> yeah. It, it's so, who is she? What's her deal? Is she in the Navy? What's happening? <laughs> uh, Usagi. Oh, Usagi. Usagi? Um, yeah, that's her name. Uh, oh, okay. Her full, her full, like, first name and last name literally means Rabbit of the Moon. Um, <laughs> so she's the Moon Princess, uh, kind of, uh, reincarnated uh, from, like, this whole Moon Kingdom uh, that came okay. before everything. Um, and, yeah, it, the, the creator plays loosey goosey with like history and, and mythology and just goes like, yeah, there was a kingdom on the moon. Yes, okay. this happened. This is recorded history. This totally happened. Also, there was an earth kingdom at the same time. This okay. also totally happened. Go with it. If, why is okay. it not in our history books? No, no, no. Well, why isn't Black Bolt in our history books? Exactly. He isn't. <laughs> so, uh, there's Dracula's on half of the moon, so it's fine. Yes. But what about, um, so she comes from a moon kingdom? Yes. Like, so that all happened in the past. And the big whole kerfuffle involving uh, the main villain of the first season, basically being in love with the prince of the Earth Kingdom. Uh, she didn't like it all that great because the prince of the Earth Kingdom was in love with the princess of the Moon Kingdom. So star-crossed lover stuff. So she, is she a princess of the Moon Kingdom? Yes. And she... Uh, 
f- did not fall in love with the prince of the Earth Kingdom. She did. He. Oh, they both fell in love yeah. with each other. And then Extra Lady uh, Beryl, who is who is the main villain of the first season and first manga arc, yeah, uh, is basically the one who's like, "Oh, that sucks. I was in love with the prince of the, prince oh, of the Earth." Okay. I'm just going to lead this whole army of the Earth against, let's say, both the, the Prince of the Earth Kingdom and the Moon Kingdom. Because I can just do that. So she and is, is she in the Moon Kingdom or is she in the Earth Kingdom? Earth. She's an Earth Kingdom yes. lady. Yeah. And so she gets her own army. Yeah. She and just she's goes like, like, I am going to have a two front war like Napoleon and fight both Earth and Moon. Yeah. Because I'm a little angry my, pants. Yeah. Because I'm super sad about this boy doesn't like me. Yeah. Okay. So, Fair enough. How old are we all? Are we all 15 <laughs> in this? Are we all Romeo and Juliet? All Romeo and Juliet. Okay. But this is pretty much what's happening. Yeah. And then, so she just rampages, uh, goes through Moon Kingdom, <laughs> sets that on fire, uh, so, okay. kills both both the prince and the princess. It's like, awesome. That was great. Wait, she kills Sailor Moon? <laughs> yeah. This isn't... Oh, yeah. Here we go. Yeah. So this, again, all in the past. Totally past. Totally oh, far removed from where we are in the present day with Sailor Moon. Oh, this Rose. is all the historical yeah, backstory. This is the backstory you gotta get Sailor through. Moon. You gotta mm-hmm. get through that. Exactly. And continue. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> so, murdificates everyone pretty much on the moon, including the prince of the earth. Uh... <laughs> hooks up with this this evil bad d- purple mass thing it's never really described as being very descript um called queen um M- metalia uh who's queen metalia is- yeah yeah it yeah, I love this series, but it's so convoluted sometimes. I was like, uh, I talked to a guy <laughs> yesterday for fifty-seven minutes just about the book Dune. Awesome. You can't. Yeah, you're not gonna you. Go, go deep, go deep, go down the rabbit hole <laughs> and, lo- and and tell me, because I, I do want to know who the queen is. Who is the queen? Again, the not very, queen. yeah, not very descript. They, it just is a purple mass of evil and hate. And okay. then she joins up with Beryl, who's just like, good job killificating everyone. Hey, could you do me a solid and release me from the seal that like the, that the moon kingdom put me under? Could you like okay. go do that at some yeah. point for me? And Beryl's like, sure, I'll get around to it. And so, Basically, because of uh, the Princess of the Moon's mother, the the the, the Queen 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 uh, yeah Queen Sereni, okay, uh, basically uh, reincarnates everyone who was on the moon. Oh, yeah. Uh, so re- everyone's been killed. Yes, everyone's and, killed. But the but the Queen Mother can go and undo exactly. Okay, uh, basically just goes undo, uh, reincarnates everyone on Earth. Okay. Uh, all all the good guys. All, all the all the good guys. All the good guys. Also, also come back. Exactly. So everyone gets reincarnated as fourteen to seventeen year old kids. Sure. <laughs> as you do. But with all their memories. No, they had to figure that out on the way. Okay. Uh, so that is basically the first season of Sailor Moon and the first arc of uh, of, Sa- of Sailor Moon was just like, oh hey, I have superpowers. I have a talking cat that's telling me I'm the princess of the moon. All of a sudden, I have to go fight this evil queen Beryl who has this beef with me. Okay. Which I don't understand yet. <laughs> oh, essentially everyone has mass amnesia from the reincarnation process. Exactly. And so, but she has been given a task by the cat. Yes. Uh, to go and fight. And she, they're like, we brought you back because Beryl's still out there. We got to end this. Yeah. We, we got to go stop this threat, okay. this threat to Earth. You got to go take care of this. Plus purple queen lady probably shouldn't be released from her. Exactly. Uh, fortress of solitude exactly. or, Generally, or whatever doing, yeah. Zod like thing that she's been jumped to the phantom zone. Generally a bad thing. Right. Uh, so then Sailor Moon goes off, has, uh, basically, finds her extra sailor soldiers uh so they're the sailor sen- senshi uh so first batch of them right. <laughs> is mars and mercury and venus and jupiter so they're the inner senshi okay based on inner planets yes i know about jupiter <laughs> that's just how she decided to categorize them what ha- is jupiter not she's an outside inner planet? the asteroid belt if you want to talk about planets so maybe she shouldn't be an inner I bet you in, in the fan community that comes up a fair amount <laughs> it might <laughs> it's like if you look <laughs> at a science you book you'd address it uh clearly you're like well this obviously needs to address be addressed because uh because it's gonna because someone's gonna be shouting at their ipod going you are not yeah correct. the second you say inner you're just like mm, i know where planets are <laughs> okay and i see that asteroid belt 
belt. <laughs> the <laughs> side of the fence you're on. <laughs> that is a commitment to some fandom <laughs> in the fact that we are talking about fiction. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I get it. So it sounds very cool, though. So she comes, so we begin the series where she and her cat go off to essentially regroup her army. Exactly. Okay. So. And, and she's a klutz. She's what's her just, name? Uh, Usagi. Usagi. Just S A G I? No, uh, U S A G I. Oh, Usagi. Yeah, Usagi. Okay. Usagi. Okay, so Usagi and her cat. What's the cat's name? Luna. Luna. Yeah, catchy, easy, and, yeah. right, easy peasy. So Luna and and Usagi go to regroup her 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 inner sanctum. Yeah, which is called a what? The 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 inner senshi. That's that's the that's senshi. The, yeah. Yeah. S E N S H I. And is that Japanese for yeah, just something? sailor soldier? Okay. And so those are her first five, like, generals, yeah. and, but they're called sailor soldiers. Yeah, so basically they're all still teenagers, they're all still kids, and they sure. all still have to deal with real-life stuff Who doesn't like a time? Teen Titan kind of exactly. superpower group? Exactly. Okay. And they all have, like, special elemental-based powers, too, oh. except for Venus, which is just love, and they just make up stuff for her, so, you know, right. just go of it. <laughs> Whatever's at left, Venus can handle it? Yeah. Excellent, because it's some sort of emotional thing. <laughs> Venus, good. we're going to need your help. Yes. Oh, she, she has yeah. a, she has a chain attack. She has a Venus love me chain attack. Yep. What does that mean? I see your quizzical face. Yeah, what does that mean? <laughs> She's wearing a necklace? <laughs> so this is like, definitely like with any anime series in the 90s, 90s, like when it comes to like, like fighting kind of animes like this sometimes, they, they have special attacks. And usually they have like a special animation for that special attack that just happens you don't really know like if time is how, frozen during it you don't know if it's happening it's real time yeah it's just like when you shout out a power and okay. then suddenly bam you, the enemy gets hit with something okay um so and it can be and, and it's different per character different per character and elemental based or whatever energy? yeah venus uh, one of hers is venus love me chain and it's just like a chain made out of hearts and she smacks people and you just go of it okay and what are the, what happens to the people she smacked uh they die <laughs> they do? Yeah. Uh, oh. in, in the manga, oh, dead. Hilariously dead. Um, in the anime, uh, they, they get, like, usually, like, evil power has taken over the normal people, or there might be a monster, monster of the week kind of situation, and they <laughs> just get smacked up a little bit, and then Sailor Moon comes in with her magical power and heals them, and then they're back to normal. Okay. Over and over again for about 30 some episodes for the first season. Okay. Okay. So that's Venus's. What's Mars power? Is it fire? All just, just setting people on fire. Oh, just lights people on fire. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just lights people on fire. That's Excellent. Fun. It's fun. Excellent. That is nice. <laughs> and, uh, and what, uh, what's Jupiter? Uh, lightning. Lightning. Lightning and flower stuff. Yeah. Flowers? Yeah, yeah. No, that doesn't make any sense. Um, yeah, she has flowers, roses. Uh, that's like her thing. <laughs> when Jupiter's it comes... a woman. Yes. And yeah, Jupiter... they're all ladies. Oh, they're all, they're oh, all, all ladies. Girls. Yes. This is an all-girl team. This is oh. girl power all over the place. Oh, this is why awesome. I love it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah. That is really cool. It's oh, kind yeah. of empowering and mm -hmm. super fun. So, what, uh, so, so Mars... A girl, uh, Zort. No, no, fire, <laughs> fire, and so lights them on fire, and so they're dead. Jupiter, Zort with the with the lightning, but also flowers. flowers do flowers sometimes. come out of them, or sometimes when it like it, they turn her, into a plant. What, basically, what does she do? their little magical powers like change uh, per season. They get like upgrades. They get different mm. ones. She gets one called Flower Hurricane. You, d it looks just she like. She yells just, the word flower hurricane. Yeah, Jupiter. Oh and boy. What does it look like? Yeah. They're basically like flower petals sometimes, depending on how it's drawn. Yeah. Um, yeah, it just looks like that. And you're like, sure, that's hurting the thing. Go with it. And the, and this is all the manga. This is not even the TV show. Both. Okay. So, um, interesting. So the, the, the okay, so we have Mars and Jupiter and Venus. Mm -hmm. And there's two more? We got Mercury. Mercury. What's Mercury's deal? Water. Water. Yeah. Okay. And uh, what does she do? Just uh, drown people. Pretty much. Just douses okay. them with water. She's not very effective. I what wish she was more effective than she is. She is not effective. Maybe, maybe the the Earth is too big. She Possibly. Need, she, need, she might need a like you remember in Wonder Twin Power, someone yes. was a bucket, and then the other person was. Water. She is. She's she one level a, down. She's one level down. She needs from a that. person to create uh, some sort of vehicle to drown the person. Yeah. Fair well, enough. One of her first powers was uh, Mercury Chabon Spray, which is basically mist. Oh, that okay. is it. 
That is it's not offensive. <laughs> it's barely defensive. That is it. Well, you know, you throw water in somebody's face, they're going to need a minute. Yeah. 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 Just a little time out. Just, just a little time little, out. Yeah. Just why don't you reconsider what you're doing? I'm yeah. Throw this bucket of water yeah. in your face. Interesting. Uh, and the last one? Uh, well, that yeah, that's Mercury, Mars, and Venus and Jupiter. We got Moon over there. That's pretty much the first uh, first series. And then we have Tuxedo Mask, who is the guy. A bat. Oh, oh, that's the handsome. Yes, that's that, the that, prince. that's our love interest. Yeah, that's our love interest. So okay, he doesn't really remember anything either, and he figures it out along the way. Does he um, have a, a familiar? Does he get a, an animal? No, he is on his own. He's on uh, his own. So basically, he's trying to look for the for the silver crystal, this magic silver crystal that he he just he has this in his head that he has to search for this silver crystal. Does and anybody else want the silver crystal? Yes, Queen Beryl wants it too. Okay, because. And that's going to give her the power to release other oh, queenie face. Oh, right, right. Oh, yes. the Phantom Zone lady. Exactly. Got it. Got um, it. So everyone's looking for this crystal, and so is Moon, because uh, the cat basically says, hey, that's our crystal. You need to go find it. It's okay. a symbol of our princess. You need to go get it. Okay. And she's like, I, I am, I'm, a, I'm 14. I don't have my own car. I don't even have a credit card. I, I'll try, right. but we'll see. Yeah. Um, so basically, it's a whole bad that's the whole series. The whole the season. Whole, yeah, Do whole they season. find the crystal at the end of the first season? Yes. And she regains her memories and remembers all the backstory about being a princess on the moon and being star-crossed lovers with Tuxedo Mask. And Okay. And so does she meet Tuxedo Mask in the course of the... Yes. The show? Yeah. And so and you do see they them. Fall in love? Yes. You see them in the anime naturally fall in love. In the manga, which I love, it's a little bit fast paced, so you don't really see it. You kind of see it, but it's. It's what, so they're, they're quick. Re, they're reunited. Yeah, like and their so time they fall on in Earth, love kind of instantaneously. It's, yeah, it's a little bit like miracle romance kind of thing, right? where <laughs> it's it's just happening. These are our two main characters. They're going to make smushy face eventually. Right. This is where we're going with the story. Right. They saw each other from, the, from across the thing, and they don't. In in the historical like setup, had they had met, and it took a second. Pretty much, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so when they reboot it, they're just like, no, no, they get it. Yeah, they get it. They're mm-hmm. in love. It'll yeah. be fine. And uh, so then do they end up traveling together? Or they, do they have their separate uh, adventures? They have their separate shenanigans uh, through the first season, and then they figure out, like, oh, I was this guy in the past. I was this girl in the past. We're meant to be together. Okay, cool. Now we are a team. Yeah. And then and then she has her, her sailor soldiers. Does he have soldiers? Kind of. Um, so he has four knights, four okay. dudes. Uh, so they were also killed in the whole past, uh, sure. past murdering. Um, and then they end up working for the bad guy under like an evil spell. So okay. they're working for Beryl the entire time. Of the first season. Exactly. And or the first arc. Exactly. Okay. Um, so that's, that's a whole problem. So then they get picked off by the sailor soldiers because they're like, all right, you're our enemy. Go, you're you're gone. <laughs> like we have to take care right, of. This. We have to destroy you. Yeah, and at the end, you figure out like, oh hey, in the past they were good guys. Oh, and we actually they're just dead. killed them. Yeah, pretty oh much. fair enough. Yeah, that like, feels very Japanese. Yeah, they're like, no, nah, let's not bring them back again. Yeah, that pretty seems much. Rude. They're gone for the rest of the series. Okay, they're gone for the yeah. So so he is alone. Yeah. So he doesn't have uh, his own sailor soldiers. Yeah, he has zero backup. So zero. basically. All everyone from like the Moon Kingdom and all the all the sailor soldiers, they're yeah. kind of his backup, kind of by right. proxy of, of. So Usagi. he's essentially become a Moon Prince. Yeah, yeah. Because he's like, I'm an Earth Prince, but I don't have any. I, I don't have a kingdom. Yeah. So he's now just <laughs> my me. apartment. My one room apartment is my. <laughs> Does he have a one room apartment? It looks like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Does she have a? Do, and do do they have parents? She does, yeah, and like all the all the regular kids, all the kids do. Yeah. They they have parents that have no idea any of this is going on. Okay, do, do they check in with them at all? A little, not so as much later. <laughs> they just gotta fade into the background. That's what you gotta do. Eventually, you gotta fade into the background with the with the wah 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 wah. Yeah, it's a char- it's Charlie Brown kind of sitch, and uh, wow. Okay. Yeah, it's involved. Like this, this kid show <laughs> that we, that we got to see over in America. Yeah. Kind of dubbed, meh, um, what is so intricate. If you go and watch like the Japanese version of it, if you yeah. go and watch the, the American version of it, you get some of the story, you get like the basic outline, but okay. we changed so much of it that first go around. In that translation? It, oh, yeah. They made, they made it very kid friendly. They took out a lot of blood. Okay. <laughs> they, they definitely did they like ed- dumbed did it Did they down. actually edit the, 
Yes. The episodes Ooh, to take yeah. out some of the gore. Mm-hmm. They also added kind of like wraparound things to the, f- uh, to the back of the episode being like, what did we learn today? Kind of oh, like really? things. It was like, like G.I. Joe and more, yes, you know, exactly. Only with more hearts and moons. Oh, of course. Cause it's for girls. Yeah, exactly. Ugh, I'm going to throw up. <laughs> but, uh, so, um, and characters who and die how- in the Japanese version, they just go away, you know? They oh, just, right, right. They, they don't really allude to like, oh, he's dead. He's dead, yeah. dead. So when you saw it, how old were you? Um, ooh, I don't know. When you uh, first born- saw Because you got sucked into the American version, right? Yeah, yeah. I was probably like eight or so. Or okay, so, so you were little. There. You were perfect yeah. age for yeah, this. Yeah, it was, it was made for me. Right. But it was definitely like I was able to... And you saw to- it on like Cartoon Network or Nick at Night or... Uh, I think or- it was just... It was syndicated at that point. So it was just like, like regular... Or- exactly. Okay. I think it was Fox, actually. Uh, yeah. First off. And, and yeah, it was on Fox. And I was like, oh, this is interesting. This isn't like anything else I've seen. Right. And there were And there were dozens of them yes <laughs> and so and they just replayed them and replayed them and replayed exactly them. like Into dragon the ball z kind of oh yeah which is another thing i i grew up on easily right. yeah yeah there's a lot of posturing up in the sky with dragon ball z that i'm like oh, i like this show but is there a way to fast forward there kind of is they yeah. made um they made a, a a second version of it called dragon ball kai yeah. which is supposedly like a remastered version where it it, it goes faster. They cut out all, all the filler. They go like, all right, we're, we're actually going to get to the plot. This isn't going to be like five episodes of Goku <laughs> warming up. Exactly. And him occasionally wanting a sandwich. Exactly. Yeah. So it's a little faster. It's okay. still a little slow, but it's faster. <laughs> <laughs> so was Sailor Moon slow like that? Not really, because with okay. that, the, the filler where you get actual character development yeah. was useful. It was Monster of the Week, but it would, you got to actually know the characters more than the manga even. Like, okay. so that, and, that was, and was helpful. it episodic? Like, did they fight a monster per week and then kind of wrap it up Scooby Doo style? Pretty much. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. With the, with the plot of the entire arc slowly right, the, creeping up in the background. Yeah. There's the big thing in the background. Exactly. But yeah. But yeah, I do like the satisfaction of, okay, we have a battle we won the battle next battle yes and we're we're inching towards it's a kind of a video game kind of play to Mm -hmm. it but um so when did you start reading the manga Ah, probably a little bit after, like when I was in high school, because it wasn't over here uh, for a while. Okay, so it took like five years of, five years, did you watch it all through junior high too? Pretty and much, yeah. The second dipped. the second I found out about the internet and like, and, and, and figured Moon out and... Japan and like Japanese animation, I found out about fan subs. Okay. And was like, oh, someone is actually putting out like VHSs of the subtitle versions. So I was like, oh, okay. Is How fan much subs, is it is subs short for subtitles? Yes, but it's done by fans like back before everything oh. and its mom was licensed by yeah. like actual american companies a lot of people that went to see anime over here took it upon themselves like to thankfully, hire translators to, to be the translators to uh, learn japanese yes yeah some probably and learned it they're afterwards. like i am the greatest pusher of sailor moon ever i'm <laughs> exactly. going to learn japanese learn editing and i'm going to edit and subtitle this thing that I already get. Yes. But needs, my niece who lives in Kansas needs to see this. Exactly. And would that's basically insane. just. see. Yes. That's, that's, that's the that's, greatest dorkdom in the world. That was the anime community in the 90s and in the 80s too, definitely, of just like circulating the tapes, you know, just like, uh, uh basically just fan subbing them, finding the site online that had the series that, that you wanted, finding out how much it was going to be. And just buying them and then waiting for them to come in and watching them, enjoying them, enjoying something wow. that is not available over here yet. Right. And then, and the, the quality was mixed. It was pretty good. It depended on the, on the fan subber, um, right. whether the translation was good or whether it was like a transfer from, and, and, from and like were there, a TV. There boards and stuff where people would review yes. the subs and stuff. And yeah. Like just this making is, sure quality yeah. control. Basically. Quality control. Mm-hmm. That's because when I first moved to Los Angeles, I did a lot of childcare. I did some childcare. Mm-hmm. And one of them was for a kid named Cole Schuster, who is in his 20s now. Mm-hmm. Hello. And uh, he is a very nice young man in a jazz trio in Seattle. You ever Ooh. get to see Cole Schuster uh, play guitar? He's uh, quite gifted. Anyway, um, but he loved Dragon Ball Z. Mm-hmm. And so, like, Christmas would come or, or his birthday would come. And there is a, there's a, there's a toy store in Sherman Oaks, California, in Los Angeles, called Toy Mandala. Mm-hmm. And they had in a drawer, like not out, these VHS tapes mm-hmm. that were subtitled Dragon Ball Z 
that's what those there you were go. Fan yeah, stuff. you got it. That and that's this is it. 1999. Is that they, sound about some right? of them might have been licensed, some of them might not have been. So they did not seem licensed. There you go. And I I gave him to him, and he was probably eight or nine at the time. Mm-hmm. And I was like, hey, um. They're not dubbed because he only watched the dubbed ones mm-hmm. on cable. And uh, and he was like, I don't care if they're dubbed. I'm yeah. dipped. I need to see more Dragon Ball Z. I need to see more posturing in the sky. And I need to see what happens uh, with Goku. And <laughs> so was it like that? Pretty much, yeah. Okay. So and then did you end up, what did, what did it, like, how many seasons of Sailor Moon are there? I there's mean, I'm five. Sh- there's five. Yeah, five seasons of the anime and five arcs of the manga. Okay. And is it ongoing at this point? Mm, kind of. Uh, the first anime wrapped up, and so did the manga. Um, that wrapped up in 1997. Okay. And then recently, they did a, a new version of it, an updated version of it, one that followed the manga more closely. Mm. So with the weird pacing. Um, so that came out uh, last year, uh, or started last year, uh, okay. or actually the 2013, I think. Um, okay. Uh, oh, no, no. I think it was actually uh, 2014. Um, Sailor Moon Crystal. Uh, I was insanely excited about it. Uh, I, <laughs> I'm sure. And, and, and then I wasn't. Um, oh, because it kind of... It it's kind not of, good. It's it, not good. They didn't nail it? Do you think it's not good, or do you think that you're not eight anymore? I think it, it might be a mixture of both, okay. but the animation quality of it, like if you see okay. any, any modern anime right now and you see it stacked up against it, you're like, wow, some of this, this one of these things is not like the other. Right. One of these things is barely animated. Okay, like, so they just kind of phoned it in? Yes, they, were they like, very much. We're going to take advantage of the fact that people love Sailor Moon. Yes, it very much feels like that. I know that the show has its fans and more power to them. Yeah. But I don't think I'm one of them. Right, right. You got you got original Sailor Moon. Are there some? How was the writing? Was the writing? It was pretty good. It yeah. was definitely like Are there it had great lines. Like no, you, no, <laughs> not really. Um, so it was... when you talk to other Sailor Moon fans and you reference stuff, do you just reference characters? Moments, and... moments, and like your favorite characters, um, okay. like the certain so arcs you like. Moment? Um, there, one of my, ooh, one of my favorite episodes, so yeah, <laughs> <laughs> well, one of my favorite episodes from like one of the later seasons, um, it involves Sailor Venus and it's basically what, like the theme of that, uh, of that season was to find like pure hearts in people. That's how the bad guy was, was getting the energy from people and, okay. and trying to, trying to find these talismans. So they would look into like, they would grab these crystallized pure hearts out of, out of random people or people that were excelling at whatever they were doing. Right. And pretty much everyone, uh, on the, on the sailor team had had that happen to them except for Venus. Oh, okay. And she got into a little bit of funk because it's like, am I not pure? Am oh. I not a good person? I'm a good person. <laughs> Don't you think I'm a good person? And everyone is like, yeah, yeah. So, you're I mean, intimidating, yeah. but yes, you're a good person. <laughs> We're just looking at her like, uh, well, I pure. I mean, we might want to debate some things, but like, yeah, pure, pure. You're totally pure, pure, pure. And so she tries to excel at everything very quickly to be like, hey, look at me. You totally want to go after me. And right. then she eventually succeeds. But that whole episode was just like them questioning her. And that's one of the right. funniest episodes episodes i've seen in that whole series oh that's hilarious yeah that's that's super fun yeah and so when people like i do an anime convention or mm-hmm. i've done one twice the akon mm-hmm. in dallas yes. and um i never know who anybody is uh, i'm always excited with the amount of effort that people are willing to do but how do they who, can you dress up are they distinct these five all these people yeah like you definitely know when someone's dressed dressed up as like a sailor soldier it's like the traditional like sailor fuku kind of like the the sailor thing at the top like a cracker around the jack, shoulders like yeah. a cracker jack uh, exactly. outfit but then mm-hmm. japanese yeah and then like a yeah exactly and then skirt and then bow in the back and then whatever shoes wig whatever and, and color accordance to which sailor soldier are oh to which sailor soldier okay. yes yeah okay. it's it's They're easy to tell which is which everyone's color coded Okay, Power Rangers stuff. Yes, exactly. Okay, all right. Wow. All right. So did you watch, do you watch a lot of anime? I've started to get back into it recently. Like, I'm definitely more of like a child of the 90s with like, with that anime, like, scene with like, 
bubblegum crisis and uh, neon genesis um, evangelion and uh, Sailor Moon and Dragon Ball Z um, okay and Excel saga stuff like that and you did in high school you were reading mostly manga reading and watching it we and actually watching. had our own anime club which was great That's crazy was, yeah Where'd it you was grow up? Uh, Baltimore in Baltimore yeah Okay. Yeah. So our high school, our awesome high school, actually had an anime club for us, and we would bring in like fan subs. Whoever had something, if they had like, especially if they had a whole series of something, yeah. they would just bring it in. That would be what we'd just watch and and go from there and and read. Manga Are you still and friends like with those people? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean that's I mean that's life changing. Exactly. To meet someone who's really into the thing you're into mm-hmm. at that kind of formative age, mm-hmm. um, or at any age. What the hell? Anyway, <laughs> who's above that? And uh, so what? So, but you went away from it. You weeded off? Yeah, a little either bit. Into different kinds of animation or into different kinds of television? Or different into- kinds of animation. And then I started getting into, like, like uh, American comics even, like, right, a little right, bit more during that time. Right, because of, of Level 7, Paige Branson, at Paige underscore Branson <laughs> uh, on Twitter, and Level 7 Access Podcast. You got it. And um, And so when did you start reading comics? Um, I probably said, like, a little bit... During the end of high school and then like, cause basically I went to like an art high school Okay, and I kind of realized like, wow, I really don't want to go into fine arts. Like it was, it was like a magnet high school where you had to pick like whether you're going to go into like photography or painting, um, or if you're, if you're doing graphic something else, design or- yeah, graphic design or, or literary arts or like theater arts, like you okay. pretty much had to like pick something and stick with it. And I did not do that. Um, I kind of uh, dabbled in in everything. I dabbled whatever in everything. they'd let you take. Kind exactly. Of. Like that was dope. my senior year. I was just yeah. like, I'm going to go to sculpture for a little while. I'm going to go back up to graphic design for a little while. And just because like I didn't really find something I was really attached to, and then I really started to get into comic books a little bit more. And I was like, this this Art school magnet school probably had access to a fur. They kind of did, but it was it wasn't seen as like a fine art, you know. It wasn't um, seen as like a respectable right. art. No, no, not Surprise! the nineties. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, and because Andy Ashcraft, who you know, met mm-hmm. uh, on level seven, uh, is my fella, and he would bring in comic books to his art classes mm-hmm. in at UCLA in the nineties, and the guy was like. Look how much work this is. What do these people get paid per page? Or what do they, and, and Andy, he didn't know that they got paid per page, like his art teacher. And he said, it's $250 per page. And he said, Oh my God, that's slave labor. That's not, a, this is a lot of work. Yes, it is. And it was so much. And the nineties, of course, I don't, I can't even read those comic books from the nineties just because they're kind of a mess. Yeah. They, there's they a lot of shoulder pads and yeah, the word bubbles don't flow as well. The panel layout can go insane sometimes. Yeah. yeah the pan, it's, it's just harder for, and I didn't really start reading comics for real until 2003. Mm-hmm. Like I read some Spider-Man back in the, in the, I think late seventies, early eighties. And that was it. And so, um, what were you, what did you first, uh, get into? It was. I was Marvel right from the beginning. Right from much. the beginning, yeah. did not get into like R. Crumb, Sad Sack. Not really. Not until later. Life. Not until okay. later. Um, I definitely like got into like Strangers uh, in Paradise a little bit later, like stuff like that. Um, but it was definitely. I think one of the first comics I read was like a Todd McFarlane Spider Man. Okay. And I don't remember which issue it was, but I was just like, I just picked it up, and I was like, oh, all right, I got a couple seconds. I'm just gonna flip through it. And I started like to really, really, really get into comics at that point. It was just really? like, well, I want more now. <laughs> was it the art or was it the story? It was the art. I was just okay. like, oh, this is a thing that could happen that maybe I could do one day and pursue. Yeah. Let me go over here and figure this out. Yeah. But then taking that love of it back into like a very fine arts driven high school was a little awkward because it it absolutely was not respected at all and was not seen as like something that anyone there should pursue or focus their time on. Right, right. Well, the weirdest thing is because it's not like you make this amazing living at fine art. Yeah. Exactly. It's not like anybody's giving a shit about fine art. Yeah. Why, why not go paint your weird, I want to draw a superhero and I want to draw a mouse with a sword. Yeah. Uh, you know, whatever the fuck you want to draw. Exactly. Um, it was definitely like more of like, 
they were they always had an attention to detail when it came to like proportion and making everything look realistic and then i would be like here's alec ross <laughs> look at his artwork what did he do um he he's done he does a lot of cover work um he's on he's on a bunch of dc stuff too but it's okay. all photorealistic he does a lot of gouache kind of like paintings basically okay. and has done entire comics uh like using that and they're so photorealistic and they're so like proportioned and everything looks amazing where right. it's like here is an exception Here's to exactly, this crazy rule that you right set up. that you you're not seeing this is exactly. what you're saying okay exactly. yeah well the 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 astro city mm -hmm. the whoever does that art who does that art my Any idea? brain is dying. That's no. fine. It's uh, I my thing with with comic books is very sad. Um, it's not sad. Uh, is that is that I'm I'm just ten years later, really getting to know the names of the writers. Yes. Yeah. You know, and then I would love the art is so important to the entire genre. Mm -hmm. it turns out, uh, so why don't I know their names? And I don't. So I'm just but, terrible with names in general when it comes to like artists and writers. And, and just and anyone involved with anything, really. So it's just like, oh, I know the title of this thing. I will one day learn the names of the people who created it. Right, right. One and day. who are really into it. And yeah. it's, it's what, one of the most beautiful things about it is the different kinds of art. Because mm -hmm. it, it can be any, you know, like someone who draws Deadpool in one comic and draws the next artist, they draw them differently. Mm -hmm. It's like a fingerprint to some yeah. extent. Because you can't, I mean, the, draw the Marvel way. Is a beautiful book, mm -hmm. uh, but it's, it's not going. It's not going to look exact, artist to artist. Right? right, right. That's why I like books that have like rotating artists on them, like from like issue to issue. Like the current Shield comic uh, that just came out. Okay. They're doing a. It's they're for the most part self contained stories so far, but they have a different artist per book, okay. and it's so good so far. Just seeing like just just the variety of styles from people. Yeah. Like interpreting yeah. the same characters, but in just completely different styles. That's interesting. And it's a, uh, it's an agents of shield. Yeah, book? it pretty much is. It has like Colson. It, it's starting to introduce Sky like guy and yeah, she's going to be coming in later. Probably. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Cause they just rebooted it essentially. Yeah. Just starting over. Well, why, why jump in? Yeah. And, uh, cause then they'd have to go real time and, and they'd probably get ahead of it actually. Cause they're probably yeah. down. Yeah. Um, Wow. Well, what, uh, so what, now that you're back in anime, what are you watching? Right now I'm watching, um, a lot of female driven, uh, like lead character kind of yeah. things. Um, like kill the kill is something that came out like kill, look, kill, kill, la kill L a. Yes. Okay. Um, and, and it's a, it's really good. It's got a really cool, like frenetic style to the, to the animation, which I absolutely love. Okay. Um, there was an anime a couple years back called soul eater. That was really good. That's another one with like a really nice, like Halloween kind of, kind of style to it. Um, okay. It, so those are those are like my top two and right they're now. Kind of, are they kind of spooky drawn? Yes, like they're drawn kind of scary. Yes. So kill a kill. What's the premise of that? Is oh it a, boy, there's a woman protagonist. Yeah, or? yeah. That's that's another insanely convoluted thing. Um, the, the the gist of it basically is that your clothes are alive, or certain uh, certain um, articles of clothing are alive, and they can change into magical battle armor. Okay. And uh, there's this school uh, that uh, basically has, like, different rankings of different clothing, uh, and each clothing can do, like, a like a random, like, ability for that person, and it's this whole gotta fight my way up to the top of the school kind of thing for the first half, and then some other stuff com comes in on the second half of the series. Yup, I see your face. Yeah, uh, here's the question. It's an anime cartoon. It's a it's a it's a television program yes. about the clothing. Mm -hmm. And our main character is someone who wishes to be worthy of this clothing. Kind of, yeah. Okay. Like they're working side by side to achieve a goal. Her and the clothing yes. are working together yes. to, to do their tasks. These are to, wonderful sentences. <laughs> There's the greatest sentences, yes. So what is the name of our character? Oh. In What's-Her-Face? Um, Again, with names, no worries. Yeah, but yeah, it's kill yeah, kill. Ryuko. Uh, that's, I'm sure I'm wrong. <laughs> it has been a couple months since I watched right, it. Right, right, yeah. yeah and but so she, awesome. she shows up to school. Just wearing jeans and a t-shirt. More or less, and mm -hmm. has a gigantic uh, scissor blade on her back. Like half oh. of a scissor, uh, but it's oh, just the one long half. sword length. Yes. It's, it's like the circle part where you put your thumb. Yep. And, and the blade. The blade. Half a blade, yeah. 
And it's it's long sword and, length. And, and that's her and that is her weapon. Yeah. And she basically challenges the head of the school, uh who She's like, who, I, I need your clothes. <laughs> <laughs> she basically wants to know who killed her dad um, okay. and knows that the person who's the head of the, of the student council knows who killed her dad or is somehow connected to it and basically has to like fight her way up the ranks. I want there to be a scene where the Jostens ring people come in and they really want you to get a, a class ring. Anyway, yeah, um, yeah. so <laughs> there's a very funny story of my brother Russell. He was president of the student council. M- most of my siblings were president of student council. I had I had no political aspirations. I wanted to be uh, the power behind the throne. I was the uh, editor of the school newspaper. I was the secretary of our school council. <laughs> Were you? There you go. It's uh, um, my friend Tracy Ashley. She was student council president. Mm-hmm. The woman who wrote Lean In or whatever, the mm-hmm. Facebook lady. Yeah. She was their treasurer. She went to high there school with the treasurer, uh, with the Lean In lady. And I said, have you talked to her recently? She said, probably should. And I said, you're a comic. Don't worry about it. Yeah. What are you going to say to her? You got a corporate for me? It's not going to, you don't need it. But um, my brother Russ had this whole thing where Justin wanted to come into a presentation to to be the, they had always been the, the school ring people. Mm-hmm. They were always going to be the school ring people. But Russ was like, no, we're looking at other companies. And so that the guy would bribe him. Oh, really? Yes. And he said, and I took that bribe. And I was like, out loud? Aren't you? You're, I'm so glad that you're not in a, a position of power yeah, that anyone should. Actual power or yeah, anything. That someone could use that against you. Yeah. And uh, here's the plausible deniability. He could tell you that he never told me that story. And let's give him that. Anyway, so she shows up with a sc- half a scissor on her back. And she wants to know if her. if, if Who killed her dad who, knows that this is somehow connected to the chairperson of the student council. And how does that battle work out? Oh, it works out kind of sideways uh, for a yeah. little while. So, <laughs> she makes friends. She learns things along the way. He um, accepts her into the school after <laughs> fighting her? Uh, the, yeah, they, they, they do accept her. Uh, the, uh, it's a lady who's the chairman of like, the student council. Oh, oh right. right. Yeah. Girl, girl fight. Yeah, it's great. Okay. Um, uh, and yeah, she's just like, all right, all right, bring it. If you want to fight your way up the school, go for it. Cool. I don't think you're going to do it, but awesome. Try your luck. Okay. Uh, so that's basically the series up to a certain point. But so she shows up at the door. Yeah. She fights the, the, the principal lady. And well, she fights the flunkies first. She, she has to work her way up. It was, it's basically by clubs. So there's like a tennis club. Uh, the first one was a boxing club. So yeah. Oh yeah. Awesome. Oh yeah. Awesome. But how does, how does the clothing get involved and, and how does she get, ex- she's like, I want to fight you guys. And they're like, well, you have to actually go to school here to fight us. Pretty Is that much. the deal? Pretty much. Okay. Yeah. And then okay. she, she finds her, her, she gets her school uniform. Yeah. Right. And then she finds her school uniform. Yeah. Which Tell is me that alive. Story. Um, I think it was in the ruins of her father's house that was burnt down. And then like she falls well, through a thing. That's what leads her to the school. Yes, exactly. So she's wearing the uniform when she shows up. Yeah. And they're like, okay, well, you're clearly, you belong here. Yeah. They're There's like a bunk. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but they're still like, all right, all right, cool. You just showed up. That's great. It, here's the boxing club to just take you out of, out of this game right now. Okay. It, with this, you're not even a concern. Goodbye. And she obviously just triumphs over all. Um, right. And, and keeps and do going. They, do they have boxing clothes on? Closing? Yeah. yeah it's all themed. Like whatever, like yeah. whatever school uniform that they're wearing, it's yeah. going to be just overblown with like boxing theme, like, like metal, like, or like rock kind of like gauntlet type like boxing gloves yeah. that the guy had and just insane boxing rules and that's how she had to triumph over it it's all overblown and over exaggerated sure and sure because like and really fu- yeah, and, yeah and really funny too which is what i love oh that's awesome <laughs> yes so there's there's a good comedic angle to yeah, it yeah with anything that I like it's got to have some sort of comedy in it <laughs> okay because it's got to be goofy a little yes. bit where mm-hmm. they're like we understand this is silly yeah it can never take itself too seriously like i i know you love lord of the rings i, I do know, i, I know. know i i can meet you kind of halfway on it have you read but have you read lord yes of the rings? i okay. have i have but they're not as there, there's a little bit of humor in it. Yeah, yeah. Yes. They're, 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 Peter Jackson. Yes. Is yeah. the, is the most cold, deadly stared. There's not an ounce of humor in any of those movies. That, that might be my major problem with the movies. Yeah. Is the fact that the only thing they do is they make Mary and Pippin like the, like, like the, the, and it just, it seems, it seems dismissive. Yes. Because those guys are actually heroes. 
and what you know make everybody everybody was had a vaguely silly part to it mm-hmm. it was a serious thing but it wasn't deathly serious it wasn't as, all the it time wasn't deathly serious all the time sam is just plodding along and they want mm-hmm. to eat mushrooms and then they wanted i mean there's yeah there's much more regular human joy to it regular daily exactly day to day which this also has but yeah. also is goofier mm-hmm. a little bit goofier. oh yeah and well it ought to be because it's animated mm-hmm. and um but manga can be anything i mean it oh can yeah be yeah the saddest story of Hiroshima Ooh, that you've ever yeah. seen in your life. I actually yes, gave... Grave of the Fireflies. Yes, what was that called? <laughs> Grave of the Fireflies. I actually gave that to my nephew without watching. Oh, that's it a bad idea. Nine. No. Yeah, he watched Sad it, times. and I called him and I said, "Hey, Salmon." Said he was the guy who d- designed um, the the Black Ranger T-shirt. Mm-hmm. Um, he graduated from art school and said, awesome. "Can I fix your logo because it's brutal?" He did not put it like that, and then he drew that. And now he's a graphic designer mm-hmm. in DC, actually. Awesome. Um, so, but he, um, I called him. I was talking to my brother, and, and Sam was was right there. And I said, "Hey, how'd you like that that um, that the the cartoon I sent you?" And he said, "I don't know if you watched it, Aunt Jackie." And I said, "I didn't." And was it great? And he goes, "It was really, really sad." Mm-hmm. And I was like, "What?" He said. It was about two little kids who walk away from the nuclear bomb that drops on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And I was like, what did I give mm-hmm. you? Sadness fuel. You gave him sadness <laughs> fuel. It was the darkest thing in the world. And uh, that was the that was the year that I made a, a decision to watch everything and read everything before I gave yeah, it to the kids. Yeah, it's a generally good idea. <laughs> yeah, never a bad idea. You're not just it's a like, great movie. It's, it's a great movie. Just maybe not to your nephew. <laughs> yeah, maybe not a nine-year-old for no reason. Uh, just because you were like, oh, cartoons. And he liked weird anime. Mm-hmm. Like, he liked all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And so... Yeah, I just went with it. Yeah. And he was an art kid, you know, which I gave him Marvel the drawing thing, too. Mm-hmm. And I, he was eight, I think. And he goes, this is too hard. And I said, well, you're not always going to be eight, weirdo. Yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> You'll just, grow into it. You'll yeah, figure it out. Yeah, just draw what you can and then keep going. And um, and he said that it actually affected. I felt I'm pretty proud of myself. Uh, it actually helped. My older nephew, I gave him his first uh, hip hop tape. And uh, and he is a hip hop nut now. And nice. I don't know that that was necessarily. And he's a sommelier. He's a wine dude. Oh, um, like one like the few people that can actually like make a it, living. like certified and yeah, like he wow. works for a for a chain of liquor stores like huh. wine stores in Brooklyn, and they send him to France three times a yeah. year to pick wine. And he's like, I don't know if I want to do this. And I'm like, too late. It's the greatest yeah. job in the world. And okay, do something else then. But. You fell into it, and you're it's a win. Yeah. So yeah. whatever. At, at that point, you're kind of in. <laughs> yeah, you to- you're totally in. And I've, I've weeded off. I've weeded off. What would you recommend people watch and read? What the heck? Just in general. In general, when it comes to, like, to anime or to, like, just comics in Let's general? Let's start with anime. We'll go to comics. We'll go to prose. We'll go to nonfiction. And then we'll uh, we'll talk about textbooks. Okay. No, so what about anime? <laughs> <laughs> um, what anime? about Attack the Titans? Attack the I am Titan? slowly, I'm slowly warming up to it. That's, like, the most popular anime right now is Attack okay. on Titan. On Titan. I think I'm the only person in the world who's just kind of, like, meh on it because, mm-hmm. wow, is that humorless. Um, yeah, it's super grumpy. Yeah. Yeah, it I is. watched the first three or four episodes and I was like, yeah, this isn't getting any, I mean, the funniest thing was when he takes over the, the giant Titan. Dude. Yeah. That was, and that's the last one I saw. Yeah. So, it was like, wow, there's a lot of ash in the air, like all the time and everything they, is brown and they're constantly eating people. Yeah. It's a lot of, uh, legs sticking out of a giant, uh, Chomper mouth. Yeah, uh, that I'm cool with. But and then, oh yeah, yeah, and then the legs just kind of going. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, fun. That's it good happens. Times. But and, <laughs> and characters just monologue a little bit too much when it comes to like their motivations and what they should do next. Like, oh right, right. There's a lot of telling, not showing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a lot of talking. I'm like, you guys can speed it up just just a little, just yeah. a little. But so yeah, what are you what are you loving? Um, that that I'm slowly starting to get into. Um, I'm trying to think of what. Else, there like was kill, kill a kill, kill, and a kill. There was there was the other one. Um, oh god, it went away. 
Yeah, but that that's pretty much like I I don't get into too many series right now because there are so many that go on forever, like your Naruto's and your One Pieces that oh, have right. two hundred plus episodes and just keep going, keep going, keep going. Right, and your breaches. Hard, it, it'd be hard to start at the beginning of exactly, those. and I have no time or patience for those anymore. Uh, okay. I've kind of realized that as a as an aging anime fan, I'm just like yeah. I can't do that. So I go down to like your 26 episode series or your 13 episode series or something oh, uh, that's just starting maybe yes, or where you um, can kind of get in on the ground floor i did just watch yuki yuna uh is a hero uh oh, right and uh madoka magica those are both they're they're both very much alike each other they're both magical girl series okay um, resenting a theme here yeah um <laughs> yeah, yeah they're they're both very good series um and they're both like different enough that you can enjoy both of them. But okay. you can you can tell that Yuki Yuna looked at Madoka and went like, yeah, I like what you're doing there. I will take bits of you and make my own thing. And twist it up a little yeah. bit. And plus Magical Girl, that uh, or Magical Child, one of the greatest tropes in the world. Yes. Everybody wants that. Yeah. So it's all good. And they're kind of coming of age stories, right? Yes, Even exactly. Even Naruto is, mm-hmm. is a, he's, he seems to have to learn over and over and over again. Over and over. Uh, are important. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> for a billion volumes of the manga exactly. and a billion episodes of the we, anime. One of my, a uh, really good friend of mine is the woman who does the voice of Naruto. Oh, cool. Yeah, Miley Flanagan. Oh, she's yeah. She's a Minneapolis comic actress. That's cool. And she's also in some Disney show called Lab Rats. Okay. She plays the principal. And, uh, but, um, like 300 episodes of Naruto. Oh, yeah. And. A lot of screaming. You know, a lot of screaming, <laughs> a lot of yollering, and uh, but they're they constantly they send for they send at the anime conventions, they send for her. Yeah, send yeah, for the, right. send for the voice of Naruto. Oh yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> so are you still reading? Because I'm. It's it's got to be. Art wise, you're you, you're dipped. I know in the comic books. Yeah, I've dropped off reading uh, manga. I've moved more into like spending my money on American comics There's right now. So many of yep. them. It's it's, <laughs> a, it's impossible to read and buy everything. Yeah, I just don't have that amount of money. Nobody so I was have to pick the and money choose. Is almost more important than the time, but mm-hmm. the time is just as imp- important. Mm-hmm. It only takes twenty minutes to read a comic book, but we like. I just talked to Andy today. He's coming to New York today, and. He said, so I went and I picked up 28 comics at, uh, cause we had spent a couple of weeks. Yeah. It's, I think it's been three weeks. Okay. That and makes he said, sense. Which one should I bring? Yeah. And I said, I just bring 10 cause I, I have, you know, I have this Batman graphic novel that this guy suggested I read. Mm-hmm. I was just given, um, an ep- I did an episode of this artist's book and I did, he gave me his, it's a children's graphic novel. Mm-hmm. He draws for SpongeBob SquarePants. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I thought so too. Yeah. He, he was telling me on the show, he said, it doesn't have any cred. Nobody, no, <laughs> nobody approves. And I said, well, then they're wrong. Cause yeah. you get to make a living drawing comics. Exactly. He like said, you've oh, won. You've yeah, won. It's okay. What, he said, yeah, I know. I feel like I've already won, but they want me to, you know, they want me to write, draw a preacher or some damn thing. I'm going to actually grab it. Tell a, uh, tell a story about, uh, the, like what comics you're liking right now. Oh God, your- so many. <laughs> um, so yeah, I basically keep up with a lot of the, the modern, uh, like Marvel comics, uh, like the Marvel Now line. Um, so I've been reading Deadpool a lot. Uh, that's probably one of like my favorite absolute series right now. And unfortunately it's ending soon. So I'm kind of sad about that. Deadpool. Deadpool, which the, the, the Duggan. Yeah, yeah. The one? Yeah, they're, it's they're ending, ending it? soon. Yeah, they're, they're, they're killing Deadpool. However, they're going to be killing him. They're kill. yeah, I know. That seems unlikely. Yeah. He seems to, his head gets chopped off and yet he's still. Yeah, seems mildly temporary. Yeah. yeah it seems always <laughs> incredibly temporary. Yeah. Okay, so it's Greg, it's Greg Schiegel. And, um, oh, okay. he was, um, yeah. Well, see, I like this style more than anything where it's not overly detailed. You you see like the really crisp lines. It's not like shadowed and like crosshatched to hell. Like I I like nice I like cartoony. the more cartoony. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it has and and it's pow and bam. That's cool. And it's a kid. And this that one's a kid's one. What's it called? Uh, picks. Picks. And uh, yeah, it's just um, and and he was talking about how he likes to write for little kids. Yeah, uh, more than more than other. You know, sometimes. Oh, one weirdest weekend. Uh, he did tell a story about how um, some publisher was like, why don't you just call it One Weird Weekend? And he said, 
Because weirdest is funner. Yeah. And uh, it's just more It makes fun you to, think. <laughs> you're just like the weirdest. All right. Then. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I love those Deadpools. Those are great. Yeah. So I've been enjoying that run just immensely, but it's coming to an end soon. So I'm, I'm sad that it's coming yeah. to an end. Like, and the, the death of Deadpool does seem temporary. I'm just wondering about all like the secondary characters that they've created, like, like Agent Preston, um, oh, right. and, uh, and Sheikla, uh, his wife, who yes. I adore. She's like, I love hilarious. her. Yes. <laughs> she should have her own book. Yes, she should. She could easily do that. Yeah. She's the queen of the underground vampire yeah. fighter people. Yeah. Yeah. She's what just, is, what what like, is her deal? She's what, like a, she like a, a demon, queen right? d- demon succubus can like... Uh, yeah, she's, she's not a awesome. vampire. She's no. a demon. Yeah. She, uh, the vampire, she was supposed to be the wife of one of the Draculas. Yes. And I have to call all vampires Draculas now, just <laughs> oh, yeah. because of Deadpool. Yeah. And uh, just because how mad they got in that, in that Deadpool, she's like... Stop calling us Draculas. Yeah. That's, how, that's his name. <laughs> well, stop acting like Draculas. <laughs> <laughs> You're Draculas. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, so are you reading Ms. Marvel? Yes. Yeah. I've been, I've been keeping current on that. So that's been, that's been great. I, I love great. that book so much. So fun. Captain Marvel, hit and miss, but back to being hit for me because mm. I like it. I've been catching up on that because I have like the Marvel Unlimited account thing on okay. my phone all and right. all of those, like it's, I can read whatever I want. It's just everything is six months behind. So it's everything. It's oh. just not exactly current. It's usually like one story arc, arc behind. So that's why yeah, I am so with, like Captain Yeah, because Marvel. comic books come out once a month. Yeah. So you're six issues behind yeah. on whatever. Any yeah, given, exactly. Any given Sunday. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Okay. Um, so what, uh, are you reading any non-Marvel stuff? Any like saga or I still any need to get into saga. Or... I, I know saga is good. Everyone tells me saga is good. Well, so, yeah. Saga is just action romance. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's just adorable. It, it looks like it has everything for me. I just yeah. need to sit down and just devote time to it. Right. Cause, but if you have the Marvel app, you, you're sucked into Marvel. Exactly. World. <laughs> Yeah, and then... Um, so mostly Marvel. I do read the X-Files comic, and I did read the Ghostbusters comic uh, that are through uh, IDW. Okay. Um, I think that's it for How about now with Dark Horse? No, uh, I'm not like really over at Dark Horse. Hellboy and BPRD? And I did I did in the past. I okay. haven't like, kept current or anything. Yeah, yeah, Abe Sapien. Yeah. Because the, the world is ending. It's, uh, yeah, the yeah. world is always ending. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yay, Marvel. Yeah, it actually is happening. Yeah, I think it's actually <laughs> dying. I was like, oh, interesting. <laughs> like they're doing with Marvel right now. Did you hear about that with the craziness with the Secret Wars? Is... Yeah, because of the movie. Kind of? Yeah. There's... They're going to take the Marvel Universe... And they're going to take the ultimate universe and they're going to combine them, but destroy by, by destroying both of them. Is More that correct? More or less. They're like smushing them together, but then they're going to take the pieces of both universes at, like for a little while and put them in the battle world and through their own separate countries. And then they're going to fight it out. I guess. I don't know. It's oh, very confusing. That. That I sounds horrible. Not, yeah. I'm not a That sounds big like fan. the worst crossover ever. It's, I, I don't <sighs> even like crossovers. Yeah. I'm just like, there's a reason why I'm buying She-Hulk. I mm-hmm. don't have to, mm-hmm. it doesn't have to apply to the axis of evil yeah. or whatever. So all of those books, all of those books that, that are in like the 616 main universe and then all the books that are in, uh, in the ultimate universe, they're, I guess, all going to just take a break while this is happening because both universes are going to cease to exist. And then whatever's left over with whatever characters are left over will have their books from now on. The Spider-Verse thing is hilarious. Yeah. I've started that to get into that. Great. I've started it's to get just into that. Where, where there's, in one of these parallel universes, there's a family that hunts all Spider-Men. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Spider-Man. Bill Spider-Man. <laughs> and, uh, and, yeah. and, uh, so, uh, the, uh, all Spider-Man kind of superheroes. So there's like a, a pig Spider-Man, there's a monkey Spider-Man, mm-hmm. and they're all from different worlds. And, um, and it's pretty great. There's spider women, there's mm-hmm. spider, and so I have, I never read Spider-Man since I was a kid, and I got into it when um, Doc Ock took over his yeah, body. That, that's when I got back into it, too, with, yeah. with that run, because it was great. That writing was amazing. Yeah. Who the hell was that? Is that Dan Slott? Is uh, that... Yes, Dan Slott, yeah. Okay, because um, it was... It was the best thing I had read in a million years. Yeah, I was totally skeptical of it, but yeah. then I actually sat down and read it, and I was like, "Oh, this is great! This is brilliant! I'm, I don't know I'm down how for he's this." Doing it because I can't tell. Do you write comics as well? Yeah. And do you, have you have you gotten some? Your art is amazing. 
Oh, thank you. Pete, uh, Paige Branson, uh, dot Tumblr, uh, dot com. And then at Paige underscore Branson, uh, is what it's on, on Twitter. But are you, are you getting work from any of the, the powers that be? No, I just do like freelance stuff sometimes. Um, okay. I, I, I'm still, I still consider myself just starting out. Um, I sure. do like a little bit like, crazy webcomic kind of things um, that really have no bearing uh, on anything. <laughs> well, but um, isn't that like Kate um, Beaton? I think Hark of yeah. Vagrant? Yeah. Hark of Vagrant Lady did that. The woman who does Ogloff. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then Ginger Hayes. Mm-hmm. Those are the three that sort of their Tumblr accounts kind of help them oh, yeah. get publishing deals and work and all kinds of nonsense. Mm-hmm. So, cause the internet, it's a wild west. And so uh, hopefully you'll get work because you're really, really good. And, uh, Oh, not a problem. Oh, it has been an hour. So oh, go for right. me, uh, for the flattery and then we can wrap it up. Uh, <laughs> but Paige, thank you so much for coming on and doing the yeah, show. Cause thank you for awesome. having me. <laughs> this has been great. You've chosen wisely Rangers. Uh, go check out Paige Branson's art. Cause it's awesome. Okay. Bye. My hat, my hat, my hat. They're dancing around my hat. <laughs> my hat, my hat, my hat. Well, what do you think of that? If it looks like a Mexican hat dance and it sounds like a Mexican hat dance, it's most likely a Mexican hat dance. So take off your hat and let's dance. Yay! Oh, my God. Thank we you. Why don't we just call that as the end of the show?